الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran that I have just recited to you comes from Surah Az-Zumr. This ayah gives a lot of hope to individuals, especially what happens when you do wrong acts for a very long time. You sort of kind of go into a mode of despair, where you see there is no hope for me because I have committed so much wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the servants Don't do that to yourself. Don't be depressed. Never lose hope. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in this surah, Ya ibadi, O oh, those of you who worship me, Alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim, those who have committed so much, so much, that they probably are in the state of mind that there is no coming back for me. Then remember, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never lose hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never lose hope. Because think about it like this. Nobody will enter the Jannah except for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter how many good deeds we do. They are not up to the par of acceptance. Nobody can do 100%. We can only try to do 100%. Now think about it, when you're standing in prayers, five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, hundred percent concentration, a lot of us can't achieve that. We don't achieve it. We can't. We try. So think about it, that when we can't achieve that in three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, it's only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that accepts this hard work from us. And then we get rewarded for doing this hard work. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not lose, lose hope in me. Now if we continue to look at this ayah in detail, the next part of this ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا It is only in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all your sins can be forgiven. Nobody can forgive your sins but me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nobody can forgive your sins but me doesn't matter how big of a king that person is, has a cap, after which the king will going to hold his hand off and say, that's it, I have given you enough. But in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's case, when he starts giving, it is the receiver who says enough. I did not expect it all this. I don't deserve all this. It's the case is very different. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all of you together from the ins, from the humans and the jinns, if come to me with your list of questions and I give each one of you all what you ask for from my treasure, from my wealth, it will not even be equivalent to that if in a vast ocean you dip a needle and take the needle out, how much water will going to have on it? Not even that it will going to reduce my wealth. Now think about it. All this wealth that we enjoy in this world is based on what? Gold. Who created that? Where does it come from? We don't produce it. It's been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we extract and purify and we deposit and then we lay our whole economic system on that. Gold, silver, Those kind of commodities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the creator of gold, He can create in such an abundance that He can create the whole universe made out of gold. Or even a better material. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am khaliqu kulla shay. I create everything. For me, creating anything in abundance is not a problem. Not a problem. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you ask me. Now look at the next ayah, same surah. Uh, sorry, this, the, the, the remaining part of this ayah. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed it is he who is going to forgive all your sins because he is so merciful. The next ayah, same surah. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ So go to your Lord. Go to your Lord in repentance, in submission. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ Before the punishment of your Lord reaches you. ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Then there will be nobody to protect you. Because the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that it just wipes people off. So it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He doesn't get us on every little thing that we do. Because we commit sin so many times. Now the hadith that I'm about to present to you is reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, both of them. Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the narrator. He says the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Lama khalaq Allahu al-khalq When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything, Kataba fi kitabihi He wrote it in the book that is with him. Wa huwa yaktubu ala nafsihi And he wrote this upon himself. Wa huwa wada'un indahu ala al-arsh And the book is with him in the arsh. Inna rahmati تَغْلِبُ غَضَبِي My mercy will always supersede my wrath. My mercy will always supersede my wrath. So, to bring the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it takes a lot of courage. To do so much wrong that He has to bring His anger down. Now think about it. Why do we get angry? Just look at it. Psychologically, why do you get angry? And who do you get angry at? You usually get angry at people that you think that you can overcome. On face. If you know that you can't overcome this individual, you're not going to get angry at that person. So this is the human psychology I'm talking about. When a child is little, can take all this hate from you. When the child grows up, the heat is reduced. If his heat is at the same level, we're going to cause a lot of chaos. Similarly, if you look at between countries, between individuals, heat raises to a certain level, then both parties realize, after this, something bad can happen. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mightiness, He can do anything, anytime, anywhere, and no questions asked. He is not answerable to anybody, yet he is so merciful. Yet he is so merciful. Because he can do anything, but he still doesn't do it. That's the beauty of it. That is Ar-Rahim in its purity. That is Ar-Rahman in its purity that he even gives to those who say there is no God. He even gives to those who say there are multiple gods. He even gives to those who cause unrest on the face of earth. And yes, he also gives to those who believe in him. Because this world is a matter of test. Everybody is tested differently. We have seen some very pious people, but they were tested a lot. In fact, we see a lot of the pious people who are tested a lot in different matters. Now apparently, if you look from outside, you'll say, wow, what a perfect life. But it's not perfect. Nobody lives a perfect life. Nobody has a perfect life. Nobody has a perfect health. Nobody has a perfect things in their life. There's no perfection in this world. That's for the heavens. Here everything is test. I have been given something. You have been given less of that. But you have been given something that I've been given less of that. So we all work together to make it a better place. So when does the chaos happen? When we don't want to work with each other. When we do not want to cooperate with each other. That is the rule number one of team building. When you go out in the industry, it's all about teamwork. It's not a one-man show. The moment you start running a one-man show, it causes unrest. People started leaving the company because you are not asking, you're dictating. They want to go somewhere where they can exercise 
their brainstorming capabilities, their intelligence. They don't want to be turned into robots. People appreciate where their intelligence is appreciated. And people do not appreciate where they're hushed all the time and somebody imposes their ideas on their heads. People who like to think freely do not like that way of thinking, that you are dictating everything to them. They want to think on their own. Because that's what humans are. They are to think on their own. Think about it. On this planet Earth, some animals have been living here for more than us. Look at them. Have they started weaving clothes? Maybe build a better house for themselves? Maybe come up with some technology? We have been, we have been hunting goats for a very long time. Have they come up with the better techniques of tackling and dealing with us? Maybe the parents telling the kids, you know, uh, humans do this to us, so make sure you build this when you build your next house. No. Yet we are thinkers. And the problem is when this human being who is the capability of thinking stops thinking, that cause what we see around us, the, the countries which are underdeveloping, you are going to see most of those systems are not thinking systems. People are not given choice to think for themselves. Everything has to be dictated to them. So when you are living in a world where you can think for yourself and still you choose not to think for yourself, now that is bad. You have a choice to make decisions, better decisions, and yet you choose not to take a better decision. Now that's your fault. Now go back home or go to countries. Ask your parents if you did not grow up outside of the United States of America, what was life like when you were growing up? And I'm telling all of you, you should ask them, don't give me the pretty picture. Tell them straightforward. Tell me the ground reality. Don't paint the picture that you had the best childhood ever, because that's not a reality. And that will going to make you appreciate how much better of a life that you live here now in these times. And even in these times, compare yourself with the kids in other parts of the world, you are going to feel so blessed. With all these blessings around us, if we yet choose not to excel, then who's to blame? There's nobody to blame but us. Now think about it, there are schools and colleges and universities that offer scholarship program. How often do you hear that in other countries? Scholarship program, if you are a good educated student, come, we're going to get you. They run for you if you are good. They run for you. Schools run for you. Harvard runs after you. Yale runs after you. Princeton runs after you. They want to get you. Because they want this, this wise person to attend their school. This kind of opportunity you have. If a person can't go to school, can afford to go to school after high school, then there are programs like Promise Program, which are offered in our community in the Tri-County area that we live in, Racine County, Kenosha County, Alcorn County, where the state colleges like Gateway Technical College would offer a Promise Program where students are applying and coming in because they can't afford to go to college, so the college pays for their education all the way through. All they got to do is maintain good grades. So we have our opportunities. If we don't excel, it's our fault. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving this mercy to us is taking this burden out of our heads. I am merciful. Stay on the right path. If you slightly go here and there, come back to me and have a focus. Have a goal. How many of us have a goal? When this kid goes into a high school, the first year freshman, does this kid have a goal? What does he want to do? Take a survey around high schools. That's sad. Go to colleges. People are changing major the first year. They don't know what they want to do with their life. Some of them are coming back to school after the age of 40 because they didn't know it until the age of 40 because of the responsibilities that they had. What is their focus? So it's, it's good to have a goal and a focus early on in the life so that you know which direction you want to go. Now at the same time, parents also need to realize 
that you can't make each and every one of your kids a doctor. It's, it's quite possible some of your kids will say, no, I, I do not have an aptitude for a medical school. I'm better off in engineering school. I'm better off in a business school. That's possible. Now think about it like this. A doctor works where? At a hospital? But a business person owns the hospital, which is a better deal. You want to, you want to employ rock doctors or you want to be one of those? You know, there's, there's a lot of ways to think. Why do you want to think inside the box that my kid will only, only going to be employed? The kid could become a very successful business person. Look at all these youngsters who own multi-billion dollar industries. They're part of this nation. They were like us. They were not born in riches. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Facebook owner Mr. Mark, all of these guys, they were not born into riches. They build themselves. And there are plenty, there are thousands and thousands of examples in this nation. The land of opportunities, that's why people come here. The land of opportunities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful on us that He has given us opportunities to excel while keeping our focus and goal that I must stay within the path that is given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time we pray, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Guide me on the right path. صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Those people that you have been happy with and you bless them. Give me that goal. Give me that path. But that doesn't mean that you only pray five times a day. Yes, you must pray five times a day. But you are here in this world. You have to take care of the worldly affairs too. You have a family to raise. You have kids to support. You have other things to do. You have to excel in your life. So never give up. That is the message here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not give up. Do not lose hope. Doesn't matter how much sins you bring. In another hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, O oh my servant, even if your sins are so much that if you stack them and they reach the sky, come to me, I'll forgive them. Even if your sins are so much that if you lay them out on the surface, on a linear surface, and they fill the face of the earth, come to me, I will forgive them. But you have to come. What is the point of coming? What is the point of coming? Have you ever realized? When you go to somebody, the point is that you have humbled yourself. You have realized that this person is more. Now think about going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in one of the hadith al-Qudsi that when my servant asks me that I must forgive him or her, that means he has accepted that I'm the Lord. That's why the servant has come to me. Could have gone anywhere, but has come to me. Because the servant realizes that only I can forgive. So, oh my servant, listen, I forgive you. So this is, this is basically the message that I want to give out to you. That have some goals. Set them. And try to achieve them. And that's exactly how we function in society these days. We have short-term goals. We have long-term goals. So have some short-term goals and have some long-term goals. Utilize all this technology that is available to you and think, brainstorm, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my opportunities? Where do I lack? And how can I improve? Everybody is different. So everybody has to work on it individually. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم